Hey everybody, welcome to Found Flicks. You ever play that game Ding Dong Ditch when you were a kid? Go and ring someone's doorbell and run off. Yeah, hilarious, right? Wrong, because you just might ring the doorbell of an enslaved witch working for an ancient demon, where the joke is on you this time because you're dead. Not so funny now, huh? That's the subject of today's Ending Explained, Don't Knock Twice, where a mother struggles to reconnect with her estranged daughter, becoming entangled with a demonic witch that seems to be attached to her. This is one that I honestly hadn't heard of until doing the video, but I've had a lot of people consistently asking it for quite some time. And I can safely say that of the plethora of horror movies out there, this is one of them. Its biggest problem being that it doesn't really stand out and isn't anything we haven't already seen before. However, it still actually has great atmosphere and camera work, along with better than average performances and a welcome and spooky as usual performance from Javier Baudet. But it feels almost like the director studied too hard at the school of James Wan, the mastermind behind the Conjuring universe. And the filmmaker did admit it was an influence, which can be felt in a generally positive way throughout, as is extremely well put together production-wise and spook-wise. Yet it doesn't do more than what Wan has already accomplished, falling in his shadow without creating their own stamp on the style. That doesn't mean the movie doesn't work as a whole because it actually does. They have studied well at the heels of the Conjuring series and accomplished many scares and scenes of suspense, and some truly standout moments that are genuinely frightening. I also admittedly can see why people might be confused by the ending on this one because it does have a pretty huge twist in its final minutes that seemingly comes out of nowhere, especially if you're not obsessively paying attention to every detail and word out of every character's mouths like I do. But fret not, dear viewer, because that is why I'm here. And after this video, everything will make sense. So let's check out Don't Knock Twice, breaking down the story, everything about our demon and its rules, as well as explaining the big twist and the ending. Our first scene gives us a very good look at the strained relationship between mother Jessica and her teenage daughter Chloe. Jess gave up her daughter years ago due to drug abuse, and after several years sober and on a better track, is hoping to repair her relationship with her daughter, wanting to get custody and have her live in her ridiculously stately home with her new husband Ben. And here the two are seeing each other for the first time since her mom more or less abandoned her. Jess lays out her offer, but Chloe is more than a little upset over the relationship thus far, saying she needed her nine years ago, but she didn't want her then. Jess stammers to explain, but can't find the words, Chloe making her feelings very clear, telling her mother to leave her alone and never bother her again, really laying down the law there. But it would be difficult to just jump back into being her daughter after their troubled history. So it is this broken relationship that will have to be repaired as we see throughout our story. Somehow Jess has gone from junkie to successful artist and sculptor in less than a decade, which is quite an impressive feat, seen working on a sculpture in her studio, with some random lady Trina holding her baby acting as models. Wrapping up their session, Trina asks Jess to hold her kid, and she places a strange symbol adorned necklace around her. Trina assures her it's beneficial, a talus whose magic will help her daughter see the love in her heart. Okay, sure, thanks for the magical thingy lady, I totally believe and trust you because Wait, who are you again? Elsewhere, Chloe is out with her buddy Danny, spotting some kids doing the childhood prank over here called Ding Dong Ditch, but apparently knocked down Ginger in the UK. This gives Danny an idea of the perfect place to up the ante on the game, taking her to the remnants of a creepy old house, now forgotten and developed over with a highway right next door. We come to understand they used to come here and play the game on a woman called Mary who lived here. And since her death, the woman has become a kind of spooky local legend, now considered to be a witch who had been taking children in town. Although as she's now dead, there is no one to feed her demon. However, it's still trapped in the house just waiting for someone to knock. One knock to wake her and twice to raise her from the dead. If you're the one who knocks, then she'll come looking for you. Okay, this demon thing uses doors as kinds of gateways between dimensions. And it's all about the doors and knocking as we will soon come to see. So if you knew all that, and if it's even just a silly local legend, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go right up to the door and knock on it twice and everything like some complete moron. You know, it's just asking for it. And that's the case here. So I don't have too much sympathy for these two. They're the ones that choose to knock twice. But, oh, guess what? After all that, nothing seems to happen. Well, except for the spooky ghost lady, briefly glimpsed by Chloe looking down from the upstairs
his window. Don't worry about that, probably. But it doesn't take long for an evil force to come a-knocking at Danny's door, floating down the hallway, entering into his place, and right over his head, startled awake by growling noises. As the door creeps open, he sees a woman's reflection in the glass, but no one is there. A knock on the door brings him to check the peephole, all shrouded in darkness. At the end of the hallway, a figure appears, growling, followed by an eye appearing right at the peephole, calling his name and telling him it's coming, then appearing inside, telling him to run. But Danny just kind of stands there, flipping a light switch on and seeing nothing out of place, still startled by a call from Chloe on his laptop, apologizing for waking him. Well, it is three o'clock in the day of morning, lady. Most people are asleep now, to be fair. Danny feels off, but before he can say more, she leaves for just a moment, long enough for Danny to get lifted and carried off by an invisible force. Chloe's saying she thought she heard something at the door and noticing that Danny is nowhere to be found. The door out of his apartment still open. A black skinned figure appears growling right in front of the camera. Still no sign of Danny the next day, the force turns to Chloe, getting a surprise call from Danny telling her to run. Just as she's about to leave, the faucet begins to dispense a black liquid into the sink. The room suddenly casts in a red glow, shadows dancing on the walls, as long fingered black hands begin to emerge from the sink, groaning, screaming, and banging on the door for help. Some college RA or whatever opens the door and the room is back to normal. Though she's unsure of what happened, she just narrowly avoided the same fate as Danny thanks to that guy opening the door. Otherwise, she too would have been taken. But the demon isn't about to give up on her yet. And I guess being attacked by a supernatural demon and the blood in the sink and whatnot is enough for Chloe to consider the idea of staying with her mom for a while, which must still be difficult even if their house is a freaking sweet, so it's not all bad. Just admitting the past few years have been amazing for them, but lamenting the only thing missing was her daughter. But their much needed dealing with past emotions will have to go on the back burner as Chloe begins to realize the demon has followed her here, and her mom has an encounter with the spirit of the woman Mary, following anguished cries through the halls one night, where she finds Mary sobbing, clutching a knife, apologizing in Polish before slitting her throat. Horrifying Jess, even more so when her face appears on the woman as she falls to the ground dying. But it was all just a terrible nightmare. Telling Chloe about the woman she saw in her dream, her realizing it is indeed Mary, the strange woman that they pranked as children, calling her Ginger. She never came out of the house, but you could see her in the window on occasion, going on to tell her about her recent experience there with Danny, worried that she'll be the next to get taken. Jess embraces her in her arms, assuring her that she will protect her and she is safe here. We'll see about that. The next morning, that Tira lady comes back and is acting even more suspect than last time, looking frightened by Chloe's presence and leaving in a rush, only offering that she can't help her and that she is marked by something evil and leaves. Well, thanks for clearing that up, lady. Thanks, bye! We later meet Detective Boardman in search of the now officially missing Danny, but he also has a connection to Chloe via a missing persons case many years ago that also ties back to Mary. As children, one of their friends, Michael, went missing, and Chloe and Danny believe that it was Mary that took him and begin to torment her endlessly by ding-dong ditching her every night, to the point that Mary couldn't take it anymore and killed herself. But that's not quite the whole truth as to why she took her own life, which Chloe learns after some good old-fashioned internet boogeyman research, and comes up with exactly what we were dealing with here. The ancient demon Baba Yaga, an evil hag or dark mother figure, who can open doors between worlds to claim the innocence. You know, usually children. Delicious, delicious children. However, her powers are limited, and she can't take her victims herself, needing a slave or cursed soul to do her bidding so she can get her grub on. These slaves can only be freed in two ways. More rules. First, killing themselves, or tricking someone into replacing them by having them do something truly evil. And guess what? This will come up later, so try to remember this whole thing. And this must actually be why Mary killed herself. She was one of Baba Yaga's servants, and in the end, the duties of bringing her people caused her to end her own life to escape it, more than just the kids pranking her. And as we've seen, her spirit still is stuck here, apparently, and she does at least try to warn the victims that Baba is coming, even though they never listen. Mom isn't buying any of this wild speculation, calling it insane. What do you mean, Mom? I found it on the internet. It's rock solid, dude. So they try to get back to some kind of normalcy, spending time together in Jess's studio, and opening a bit about the past for the first time. Jess admitting that she wasn't there for her daughter, and honestly felt it was better for her to have someone else raise her. But Chloe doesn't agree, obviously wishing her mother, no matter her faults, had taken care of her. When getting a delivery, Jess finds the studio has been vandalized, everything on the ground and broken, the statues adorned in odd black coverings. She thinks it must have been Chloe, but she knows it was the demon 
demon, showing its presence to them both, with a message scrawled in red on the floor. She's mine. After this, Chloe is ready to pack her stuff and go. Though before getting the chance, the demon makes another attempt for her that night, first luring Jess out of the house, the outdoor light shutting off behind her, as inside Chloe is awakened by Knox, searching the house for her mom. Chloe encounters Mary, who warns her to run as before, which also signals that Baba is on her way soon, barricading herself in a room that won't stop the knocking. The closet door is opening behind her, and a dark body starts crawling on the floor towards her. Chloe now trying to get the door unstuck, squeezing in between the crack. Jess makes it in time just as Baba is about to get her foot, flinging the door open, everything now back to normal with the door open. Jess is obviously starting to have a handle on how this thing operates, and the two set out to remove and burn every door in the house, which is a good idea, but proves ineffective the next morning. When trying to leave, and a door has been placed in the spot, the still burned door from Mary's house, opening out to a forest, on the other side seeing the world of Baba Yaga. An invisible force grabs Chloe, lifting her in the air and flinging her into a china cabinet, then dragging her across the floor towards the doorway. Her mom hangs onto her for dear life and manages to hold on hard enough that the force gives in and retreats, the outside again returning back to normal. Unsure of what to do, they take the opportunity to get help from that Trina lady who seemed to know what was going on, but I'm not sure why exactly she trusts her so much. And when presenting her with Chloe's research, Trina dismisses it as definitely not being Baba Yaga, and saying you can't believe everything you read on the internet, then pretty much derails their investigation into a completely different direction, removing the idea of Mary being a witch altogether, but in fact an innocent woman, accused of a crime she didn't commit, and her spirit is seeking revenge on Chloe for knocking on her door all the time all those years back. The only way she says to save her is to find out who really took that kid Michael, and encourages just to listen, as Mary could provide her with guidance in her search. Hearing all of this, Chloe takes off, and her mom reaches out to Detective Boardman in search of answers. Wondering if there were no other suspects other than Mary, what made him change his mind about her being guilty? He clarifies he didn't, that the case was simply closed, and he still believed her to be responsible, yet never had any evidence to prove it. As Jess returns to her car, she seems to get her first clue from Mary, a piece from her broken statue, the baby part, sending her back to her suit finding a random box chock full of relevant information related to Mary's case. Where did this come from and how did she get a hold of it? It's just like poof, magic box of secrets, here you go. She also inside discovers a USB stick containing video footage of Boardman aggressively interrogating Mary about the missing Michael, getting pretty severe and making the old woman break down in tears. All of this is making Jess start to believe Tira and thinks old detective Boardman might not be as on the level as it appears. As Boardman returned Chloe to the children's center, they are more more than a little concerned about what Chloe has been going on about since coming back, and question Jess if she's back on drugs again. She's frustrated, just wanting to protect her daughter, then drawn to pictures on the wall, several featuring bored men with groups of kids, one including Michael, learning that he has volunteered there for years and is adored by the children. But Jess thinks back to something he said earlier, that 99% of the time it's someone close to the child that takes them, now fully believing he's the one behind the kidnappings, and busts Chloe out of the building, sneaking out of the back. Though the reunion is unceremoniously cut short when standing over some maintenance doors, they open on their own, Chloe falling down into the void, and she's gone. At least Jess has a pretty good idea about where she might be, Mary's house, wisely not using the door, but breaking through a downstairs basement window and crawling inside. Her foot landing perfectly on a piece of wood with nails sticking straight up, digging deep into her soul. Ooh, that's probably gonna get infected. Who knows the last time this basement was cleaned? Probably never. Hearing noise from upstairs, she believes it might be Chloe. Nope, it's the cops who have tracked her down. But before leaving, Jess makes sure to knock twice on the front door, putting her on the demon's watch list as she's dragged off the prison. There, she has a tense confrontation with Boardman, accusing him of taking Chloe and Michael, wondering how many more he's taken over the years. While Boardman, showing that he genuinely cares for Chloe and believing that Jess has lost it and is back on the drugs, chides her for ruining her daughter's life nine years ago and refuses to let her do it again. He also doesn't respond to her accusations, only assuring her that they will speak again soon and moving her to a cell. But Jess doesn't intend on sticking around long, digging into her still fresh foot wound to gather some blood, to write a message to the demon calling it to her. Baba arrives moments later, crawling down the wall behind her and is just about to grab her before vanishing. The door changes to now leading her to the forest as we saw earlier, Jess stepping through and finding herself outside, looking around in bewilderment at her surroundings. She stepped into Baba.
Baba's world. She's now guided by another voice, that of Danny's, though we never actually get a good look at him, as he's still trapped in the demon's world after being snatched up, chasing after him to Baba Yaga's cave entrance. Deeper inside, Chloe is housed in an ancient looking cage, hearing strange shuffling sounds emanating from underneath, as hands reach onto the bars, and a face pops up. Her little friend from when they were kids, Michael, who somehow hasn't aged since being trapped in this world all these years. But that won't matter much longer, the hag appearing and grabbing Michael, gobbling him up, Chloe helplessly watching from the cage. Moments later, Baba recedes, and her mother finds her, smashing at the latch to get her loose. Seeing Baba has returned now at the cave mouth, they quickly scurry away into a claustrophobia-inducing tunnel, the demon right on their tail swiping from behind, and then appearing on the other side attacking Jess, until she's drawn away by someone knocking. It's Boardman now at Mary's house, and he has inadvertently performed the knock ritual, the door of the house granting him access to the caves, hearing the girl screaming for help inside. He's not too far behind, coming across Chloe's now empty cage, as the two come out to the front door, still open, and decide to make a break for it, Chloe keeping the door open to allow her mom to get out. But Boardman isn't as fortunate, getting grabbed by the demon, pulling him back inside, and the girls sit by and merely watch, not doing anything to help whatsoever, though Jess still believes him to be the kidnapper, so she probably thinks he deserves his fate. And at least she and her daughter are safe, for the moment, that is. The next morning, Ben returns from his business trip, finding the house in disarray and wondering what the hell happened, coming across a person dressed in white waiting for him, Ben demanding to know who they are and threatening to call the police. We then switch to Jess and Chloe as they come home later, seeing the woman was Trina, her plastic suit now covered in blood, clutching that case box tied to Mary, tossing it along with Ben's corpse in her truck, seeing a branded seal scar on her chest. It abruptly vanishes, all of which will make sense in a moment. Chloe and Jess discuss Boardman, Jess maintaining that he was indeed a bad man and deserved what he got. But Chloe continues to disagree, as she did actually know the man, saying that he was good and always protected them. Even more specifically, she mentions Michael and seeing him getting eaten by the demon, so that was definitely her doing and not the detectives. This information causes Jess to begin to understand her fatal mistake, as casting doubt on the detective was Trina's doing, flashing back to those ever important two ways to escape servitude. Told you it would come back just in time for a big twist -roni. Somehow only now do they realize that Mary was Baba Yaga's slave, and Trina was as well, tricking Jess since the very beginning, starting with bestowing her the necklace, and her intent was to escape her slavery by tricking Jess into doing something horrible, which was allowing Boardman to get taken. Jess simply allowed him to be taken because of what she thought about him, but as this turned out to be inaccurate, Jess had effectively done something evil by being tricked into it, and it was obviously Trina who led her step by step to believing him responsible, her being the one that left the statue piece behind, along with that magic box of info. Everything was to lead her to letting Boardman die. And right on cue, the necklace Trina gave her begins to glow brightly, quickly burning the same emblem into her skin that disappeared from Trina, showing us that she succeeded in her plan and has transferred the burden of serving Baba Yaga to Jess. The door to the room opens and her new master Baba appears, beckoning for her. Bomber! The two finally came together and bonded as mother and daughter after so much pain and strife, only for an ancient demon to screw the whole thing up. Ain't that always the way. Even though Jess did prove herself a worthy mother, willing to do anything to save her daughter, ultimately it didn't matter as she got duped by evil. Though we know Chloe is really at fault here, she shouldn't have knocked on the dang door in the first place. Well, I hope you're happy because your mom is bound to a demon servitude thanks to you. And based on the ending, I'm gonna wager Chloe is gonna be the first one taken. So learn your lesson, kid kids, don't knock on anyone's door ever, or just don't do it twice. Usually I knock like five or six times. I mean, who knocks twice anyway? So knock safe out there, kids, because sometimes a prank is just not worth the hassle. This brings us to the conclusion of this ending explained for Don't Knock Twice. Hope all you guys that requested it are happy to see this one. And I'm happy to take requests of any kind for movies or TV shows. Just send them my way on any of my social media accounts at Foundflix, and I just might do them. Might take me like two years to get around to it, but I will do it. What did you guys think of Don't Knock Twice and its ending? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.